Hi, this is Jonathan. Welcome back from watching that hike over the Fimvordahals Trail in Iceland. So in this section I will show you the route that we took to complete the hike and give you some general planning advice. First of all, if you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support by subscribing to my channel as it ultimately enables me to go out and do more of these treks and videos to share with you. So our starting point for this hike was in Thorsmork, which by the way is Icelandic for the ground of Thor, and we hike towards Skogar, which is the end of the Fimvorduhals trail. So you can hike this trail in both directions. Um, we saw some people hiking from Skogar that we met on the way, but if you're hiking the Laugvegur trail, it ends in Thorsmork. It comes from here and it ends in Thorsmork. So that was the perfect starting point for us, seeing as we just completed that trail. Total elevation gain for this trek is around 1200 meters and the distance from the volcano huts in Thorsmork to Skogar is 27 kilometers. So you need to be moderately fit to complete this hike. I want to highlight also the average time to complete this hike. It's somewhere between 10 to 12 hours. Uh, but should it take you longer it's okay because it never really gets dark during the season months of July and August. So, in Thorsmork, we camped in a place called the Volcano Huts, uh, that you can see here on the map. And we left there around 7 in the morning, hiked around 2 kilometers, until we reached Langidalur. So that is a hut that you can see here, just before this uh, rock field. All over the place there were sticks with color markings, which were either blue or red. And all you need to do for this full trek is to simply follow the blue markings. From Langidalur, we crossed this uh, stone field. A bit further up, there was a bridge that you can use to make a crossing over a river. 
when you reach the other side, you can refill your water bottles outside the hut, which is also where the official trailhead begins. So if you're worried about the distance, that would be a good place to camp the night before. From there, you hike up, up, up in this really beautiful area. Worth pointing out that some sections felt a little bit steep, so a small warning in advance here uh, if you are afraid of heights. So there was one section right about here, I think, as you reach the top, uh, where you needed to scramble for a few meters. After that section, everything gets easier, so once you're past it, you don't have to worry about more steep sections. So about that, before you start out on this hike, ask any nearby wardens about the weather conditions, as I can see that particular part being dangerous if you have poor visibility. So here was another quite steep part. For us, the weather was not that good on top, with rain pouring down, but the visibility was still okay, so it felt safe. You will then come up on this sort of plateau, where there will be snow, so there is no need for crampons, it wasn't slippery, but it does get a bit colder, so make sure you bring sufficient clothing. On the top of that plateau there is a hut where you can warm yourself, as well as use a toilet if you need to, but you do have to pay 500 Icelandic krona to use the facilities, as well as to refill water. From there it's all downhill, easy I would say. As you hike down this path you will also see the, the ocean, in the horizon, so that was pretty cool. So as you progress, you will walk along these green rolling valleys and there is a river that you follow all the way. So it starts about here and then you can see there is a river all the way down to Skogar. There are a lot of waterfalls here. Uh, I looked it up and at least 26 of them. So that's pretty cool. Another thing I want to point out here is that we met Craig Adams on this trail. We met him on a couple of occasions throughout our uh, Iceland hikes as we had more or less the same itinerary and he hiked with us for a few moments throughout these treks. I was a bit starstruck meeting him as he's a huge source of inspiration for both hiking as well as creating amazing hiking videos. Such a cool guy and if you haven't already seen his channel, check it out. When you reach Skogar at the end, after following this river over here, there will be a lot of tourists in this area because there are bus transports that go directly to Skogar just to view that last huge waterfall at the end of the trail. So there are plenty of hotel options in this area and a few restaurants, but there are no grocery stores and nothing else to do other than sleep and eat and look at that huge waterfall. So we stayed the night and we booked a bus transport to Reykjavik the day after. And there is one leaving every day at around 10 o'clock. So, to sum it up, this was my favorite hike so far, being extremely diverse in terms of sceneries you will encounter if the visibility allows. I can highly recommend it, especially if you're doing the Laugavegur trail that ends in Thorsmark. You should definitely add on just one more day to complete this hike. If you think it's too long, you can actually split this into two sections. What you would do then is to sleep on a hut sort of in the middle of this trail, on top of this pass. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Also thankful for any comments and feedback I get. I will soon upload a longer Laugavegur trek video that we trekked prior to this one. So stay tuned and thank you very much for watching.